In this set of problems, we're going to be working with what I call straight line torque. And we're going to be working on problems where the net torque is zero. So the system is in equilibrium. The idea with straight line torque and T net equal to zero is that we're not concerned about an angle of rotation. But we still need to know which torques go in which direction. So we will write counterclockwise torque as a positive number like an angle, and clockwise torque as negative. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. And then we have our formula for torque, which is torque equals force times the distance from the center of rotation. So that means we need to know these pieces of information in order to work with torque. We need to know where the center of rotation is and how far each force is from the center of rotation. And remember, force is a vector quantity, so it has a direction, so torque will have a direction. So we need to make sure that our directions are the correct directions. So let's rewrite that formula. In short, torque tau equals force times distance. So that's this. Okay, what is a typical problem for torque? A very typical easy problem for torque is the diving board problem. Here is the description. A diving board is four meters long and the fulcrum is 1.25 meters from the bolted end. The board is bolted at left to the cement with bolts that can withstand 4,200 newtons of force. A. Ignoring the weight and bending of the board, how heavy can Penelope be before the bolts give? So here's where the board is bolted. Here's the fulcrum. Here's where Penelope is. We want to know how heavy Penelope can be before this will go, before this end of the board will come undone. And B, suppose the board itself weighs 50 kilograms, but still ignoring the bending of the board, so from bouncing. Now how heavy can Penelope be before the bolts give? And in the second part, we want to see how this 50 kilogram acts within this system. What are the things you need to know about working with torque? You have to get this problem and say, hmm, looks like a seesaw. There's, there's some kind of forces going up, forces going down. This is a problem with torque. So the first thing you have to do is recognize that the problem, I mean, there's no mention of torque here, is a problem with torque. The second thing is to recognize that it's a problem with net torque equal to zero. It's an equilibrium problem. We want to know when this system is in equilibrium when the weight of Penelope balances out the, the strength of the bolts. The third nice thing about this problem is the center of rotation is clear. Many times it won't be. You'll have to try and figure out where the center of rotation hinges, fulcrums, but sometimes you don't get that either. So in this case, we have a fulcrum. So that's the center of rotation right there, like a seesaw. It is the point on the board where the fulcrum is located. So now we know the center of rotation. We know this force is her weight. This force is the strength of the bolts. So we can see the forces, Penelope, the bolts, and eventually the weight of the board, in what direction they act. This one acts down, this one acts up, the board will act down too. And how far each of these are from the center of rotation. So we've got the information we need and we can solve this. These are the things that you need to find before you start solving a problem with torque. Now we're gonna solve this problem with torque and see how torque works.